we're fighting like cats and dogs to try to prevent it from being too bad, and the legislature's got a tough problem. But I want us to be thinking about what are we going to do, and, and let's think about the future. We can continue to do big things. People here love their children and their grandchildren, and they love education. So David, we're going to have you come back up here. I want, uh, don't talk, we've talked to Dr. Huff and Stephanie, and I want the board, the big partnership board, Reverend Horton, all of you all, to be thinking about this. There are several ways that we can have, I think, far more effective funding, and we need a lot more than we've had. We've, been, we've had up, up to, what, 230 a year was a high mark. We're down now at about 180 or something like that. So please, all of you now, you're the leaders. Let's be thinking about this possibility of doing things like this at the county level, and then we want to talk to you about some other possibilities. <laughs> just, Good. just you're all you're all put on notice now. That's uh, we, at least we have some sense of where we might be going, right? So, but Governor, if this has to be sold at the local community level, and yep. you, unlike uh, almost anybody else in the state, you know our people. So what do you think they need? What's going to make them be supportive of it? What's, what's the, how do we get down there in the, into the uh, grassroots and convince people um, to, pass a, to pass their own, to tax themselves in a local county? What should we be talking well, about? And I wish we were all in a big conversation together here. I'll tell you what I think. First of all, I think people love their children and their grandchildren more than anything in the world. And the younger they are, the more you love them. <laughs> True. <laughs> know what he means. <laughs> Second, we believe in education in North Carolina. And I really do think, and, 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 and by the way, the way Smart Start works, the way you work it, think about all these child care centers you work with. They're private, they're nonprofit, they're church, they're, you're working with the homes that, that take care of children. Listen, this is a marvelous uh, uh, organization, if you want to call it that. The way all of these folks who care for children are involved with Smart Start and your wonderful leadership of it, I, I would just say to you that when things get back a little more normal, We'll be ready to put more money into education. People have, have a good feeling and a, and a uh, very positive about Smart Start because of you all. And now listen, over the years I've done a few polls. Mm -hmm. I can tell you they like Smart Start. In fact, I've just been telling the legislature that. You reinforce it here. But I, I, I want us to think big here today. Just don't think small, what we can't do all the problems. Now, this isn't all going to be done tomorrow, folks, but today's a day to get a big vision, to learn about some new approaches that David and some others are taking. And let's start thinking about how we can make Smart Start what it really ought to be for every child. We never got enough money to help more than half the kids. That's true. Probably not that much, mm -hmm. right? We know how much more we need to do because we want every child to start to school healthy and ready to learn, to, to be in the process of becoming all they can be and should be and ought to be. So that's why I'm so interested, David, in what you've done here. Now, give us some more ideas about things we can do. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll give you, I'll add this to it. After that election, that second election, now the second election occurred, incidentally, as the economy is tumbling. Mm. So if you wonder about housing values dropping, I live in the capital of yep. get rich quick and get poor quick. <laughs> That's historically the story of Miami and South Florida and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the economy, gas was costing a fortune. The economy was already tumbling. Property values were going down. Uh, banks were in real trouble. This is in the latter stages of 2008. So it scared me to death that we couldn't do this. 
But like the governor, frankly, I've got great faith in people that if you give them enough information and if they trust you, they'll do all kinds of things. It's not, in my view, anti-tax. It's anti, I don't know what you're going to do with my money and I'm not sure I trust you doing it and look how they're wasting this and, and this. We're trying now to build a movement. I worked for 19 months just to sort of see if we could do it. I polled with Democratic and Republican pollsters 1,515 likely voters in Florida with a plus and minus of 2.5%, meaning we had a very accurate poll. We ran a whole month test market and with community organizers and television just to see with pre and post polling, could you move the needle significantly? We moved it dramatically did focus groups all over the state in two languages. Met in Florida's a very big state geographically and otherwise and met with people in 11 different communities. Made sure that we were meeting with people from both major parties. Ended up doing return on investment studies. The governor needs to prove Stephanie needs to prove, I need to prove that this stuff actually is measurable, quantifiable. You get different outcomes if you put it here and here and, and here. And then launched the Children's Movement of Florida last September using this video and lots of other things in 17 cities, gathered together 15,000 people for what we call milk parties. People have tea parties, we'll have a milk party. We have milk and cookies for everyone, among other things. That's great. Uh, have now built a base. I communicate with 235,000 Floridians every week. We have a membership campaign. So give me five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, you're a member and you'll get a membership card and lots of other things. Because I'm convinced long term the internet is a stunningly good way to raise money. Mm -hmm. And you saw that in the Obama campaign and you see it in, you'll see it increasingly in lots of other ways. So I hope to have a million followers by the end of next year. Uh, we have a professional staff. We're doing lots of things. Listen, folks, we're building the bicycle and riding it at the same time. Now, what, I, what's this group doing, David? Uh, You've got them all signed well, up. We have, we, for instance, uh, we're at every single one of the principal legislative delegations in this state uh, with 30 or 40 adherents and T-shirts at each of those. Uh, we're a public charity and do spend part of the money on lobbying. You need to do what other people do. You all have gotten raised some private money Governor for has. Governor has, so you all can do some lobbying. It's how the system works. You have to what work. What are you lobbying for right now? We focused on a children's movement ultimately is about all children and lots of issues, but we, the polling showed five particular issues that would make that the people of Florida, the voters of Florida, the likely voters of Florida would make the most difference. So the five issues are these. Two of them are really private sector issues. High quality, best practice, mentoring and parent skill building. Nothing to me is more important than a parent, a knowledgeable, caring parent at the core. Third issue, uh, health insurance for children. I find it scandalous that we have 822,000 children in the state of Florida who have health, no health insurance. How do we live in this great a country and any child is without health insurance? It's wrong. Uh, a, fourth issue, a fourth issue is we passed a constitutional amendment for pre-K, but it's nowhere near the quality it ought to be. Uh, so it's to fix specific things. All of these are very specific. And the fifth issue is screening and treatment for children who might have special needs. One out of every eight children in America is a child with a special need, it might be autism, might be cerebral palsy, lots of things. It's a semi-hidden population, I say sadly. Uh, what do we know from the research? Understand it, screen it get to it early, and you've got a marvelous chance to have children fulfill their potential. But in fact, and an awful lot of children go to school, uh, neurologically they're not diagnosed until age eight or nine, they're special tracked. It's just terribly sad to me uh, that when we could do so much 
earlier than, than we do. So those are the five issues that we start with. Do, do them again for us. High quality parent skill building. High quality parent skill building. Health insurance. High, high quality best practice mentoring. Oh, mentoring. Uh, health insurance for all children. Uh, screening and treatment for children with special needs and fixing the quality of Florida's pre-K program. All of these you can find, incidentally, on a website called childrensmovementflorida.org. And then if you have questions of me, you can find my email easy enough, and I'll be delighted to respond to you. Now, uh, we've got somebody here from Arizona. She's right down here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if, uh, you, you don't have a dedicated tax for, for early childhood, do you? Statewide. Statewide, we do not. Arizona. Some states do. Do you know? Can you talk well, about no, what, Arizona, what that? Arizona's done this battle twice, um, where they had a ballot initiative that uh, put aside, specifically put aside money for young children right. for zero to five. Some other states have also tried that. You know, it's, it's, it sort of depends on what happens in your state as whether, this, whether the state can do a ballot initiative yeah. like that. Yeah, let, let me tell you about Arizona because I went out there twice at the invitation of Governor Napolitano, who, by the way, you know now she's the Secretary of Homeland Security, you've seen her on TV. Before she was inaugurated, after she was elected, she came here to study Smart Start, to study you all. Aren't you proud of it? Well, you ought to be. And she worked hard on these issues. And at one point, this was probably three, four years ago, uh, a lot of very committed parents mm -hmm. in Arizona did go and lobby the legislature, and they, they got a referendum put on uh, for a dedicated tax that everybody would pay. Don't remember what it was or how much. But they, how much? It was tobacco tax. It was a tobacco tax. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a tobacco state, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll select something else. Yeah, we uh, uh, try not, something. Well, not necessarily. Oh, okay, good. Listen, our children are more important than anything. <laughs> All right, now hold on here. <laughs> but let me tell you how powerful this was, because I've stayed in touch with it. They passed the referendum. In other words, the people, the, the, the legislature let them have the referendum. And then the people passed it, overwhelmingly. Well, last year, the state was in tough shape, like every state is. And the legislature decided, well, we want to take that money, not give it to the children anymore. We've got some needs as a state. We'll take the money. And they put that on the ballot, whether or not to let them have it. Guess how the vote came out? <laughs> the people of Arizona voted two to one to keep that money for the children and not give it to the legislature. <laughs> now, I want to say to Dr. Huff and the board and Stephanie and all of you, I don't know whether or not we want to have a dedicated tax for our children. But let's look at the possibilities. That may be something we want to do. We don't know what we'd want to put it on, exactly how to do it. But we talked earlier, David did, about a local uh, thing that we, they committed to do. That was a property tax. We could have a tax on something else statewide. Again, now, when we get in a little better shape, but that's the second alternative. And you know, the, the, all the polling on that, Governor, is when you ask people in our state about, um, about taxes, they're, they're, you know, when things are bad, they're, you know, they, they have, they're not as supportive. But when you say to the people of our state, I want to, especially what we call the sin taxes, which would be, you know, alcohol taxes or cigarette taxes, when you say we're going to use a sin tax and you tell them you're going to spend, what you're going to spend it for, which goes to your point of trust, the numbers go through the roof. People say, absolutely, totally fine. If I know you're going to spend my extra penny on a beer, then I'm good for children, then I'm with with you and we can go forward. Let me make one other point, and the governor may have a better or contrary picture on this. When I got started learning about this, it was really through a, a governor, again, that go, whom Governor Hunt would know, Governor Lawton Childs 
a really, really fine human being who had a grandchild with significant special needs, and it made him interested. And he became an evangelist on the subject, mm -hmm. and he's the one who got me interested in the first place 15 years ago. And I like to read, and I like to learn, and I like to travel, so when I got interested, I started going to places like France and Sweden and Reggio Emilia and Italy and other places lots of you would know about. And I saw a people's vision for their children. But we're not Western Europe, and we're not the rest of the world, where the federal government is the significant power in health and education. I would argue, to some degree, the significant power in America is a local power. Mm -hmm. It's the people of Guilford County, or Wake County, or Mecklenburg County, uh, and so forth and so on, deciding what they want for their children. <laughs> What I worry about is with a statewide tax, unless it is dedicated to something specific, you're going to let the legislature off the hook on its responsibilities. So we don't need the legislature to appropriate less. If anything, we need them to appropriate more. But it would be the people of a county deciding, of Guilford County saying, boy, let's do this for our children, and then somebody else saying, well, boy, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll do it, et cetera, et cetera. What I think you would need is the permission of the legislature for people in your county to be able to have those votes. So the legislature wouldn't be passing anything but the enabling legislation. Would that be, Governor? How that, that, that may well be. But David, we got a lot of poor counties. A lot of little counties, poor counties. I don't care how much tax you add on to it, you're not going to get a lot of money. And, and there are a lot of children there that need it. So I think maybe we need to be thinking about a, sure. all these possibilities. Don't you all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, it, it, it goes, to, it just speaks again to us understanding our own state and exactly. our own people well enough to figure out how yeah. to but, but, but speak the to local, their hearts. But the local point that David's making is really good. You know, that's why you all are so effective. First, you believe and you work hard and all of that. But you know how your people feel about their children and their grandchildren. By the way, I'm not sure we, we talk enough about grandparents, you all. Hey, <laughs> I got 10 grandchildren. I'll I've, do I've got five, more. but I'm gaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got five children, he'll pass me. Five, I only have four. It helped. This is good. All right. All right. So um, you both talked about these great big ideas. So do you think, and there are other states that are copying Smart Start. You know that. And there are other states that are taking slightly different uh, approaches. Are we getting to a place where we're talking about, in really big ways, sort of universal education starting at birth? Is that where we're going? Well, I th here's what I think. I think that we got a long way to go in public awareness and in business awareness. Uh, I still see principals of school. If I were the principal of an elementary school or a first grade teacher, I'd fall in love with the kids way before they got Amen. to my school. That's right. Way before, because I'd want a continuum from prenatal all the way up. I'd fall in love with childcare, so it's not storage and warehousing. It is high quality, brain stimulating, et cetera. I would see how what I'm doing, I would, I would see what, how I'm doing in terms of curriculum, professional development, how does this fit in? Early childhood to me is really zero to eight. And so if I did that, boy, would I be making a stunning difference in, in, the, in, in the future. But as hard as I've worked, as hard as the governor has worked, as hard as Stephanie worked, and Karen has worked, Olson has worked, and so forth, we're a long way from the promised land for people to understand this, because most people still think of, now I'm generational here, we've got children in rows, uh, teachers standing in front, and a blackboard. Now, I know we don't have blackboards. We've got smart boards and white boards and <laughs> other boards and so okay. forth and so okay. on. But having said that, we still haven't done anywhere near a good enough job of understanding learning in the earliest years and what learning means yeah. and how going to a grocery yeah. store with your child sitting in a basket can be a wonderful early literacy experience about sizes and shapes and colors and, and other things and so forth. So to me, you cannot build a supply until you build the demand 
and the demand requires stunning efforts in public and parental awareness. I think we got momentum. I think we're building a real movement, but I don't think we're anywhere close to the promised land. Uh, I agree with that. And, and let me say, we just had about uh, 11 or 12 governors from around the country, some of them from the territories way over in the Orient, uh, here uh, down in Raleigh and Cary, uh, for a uh, governor's education symposium. And Dr. Jim Goodnight, who own SAS, the largest privately held software company in the world, here in North Carolina. He and his wife, Ann, are great supporters and leaders for education. He talked about the kind of children that come to our schools and then the kind of experience they have there. These kids are into all of this technology. That's all you know about. I don't know <laughs> enough about it, to be honest with you. I came along too early. But I want to tell you folks, I want to see us have child care centers and homes and opportunities for these children to begin to develop their minds and their interest and their excitement very early. And I want our child care centers to be prepared to work with those kids. Now we don't have to start it too early. Some people want to start it too early. But I want us to be on top of things. I want us, us to be alert as to what these kids are already doing and thinking and what already turns them on so that in our child care centers and our work to prepare kids to go to school and become all they can be, so those kids will be in situations where they are challenged, where they are, are comfortable, where they are, we're really taking them as far as they can go and especially in getting ready to read and building that vocabulary and all of those things that we need to do a far better job of if they're going to become the kind of successful students we want them all to be in North Carolina. So we're, um, we're almost out of time. Um, I think you've, uh, David, you've offered, uh, offered new ideas and thinking and, and uh, the governor's challenged everybody here to follow up with the great ideas. We sometimes feel like we're a bit under siege. I know from, I, I, I am one of your 230,000 uh, members online. I read your, uh, your messages on a regular basis. And I think uh, this week it was, we will not give up. Um, and I yep. certainly feel that that's a theme that we've, uh, we've talked about here uh, during the whole conference. So um, what do you, you know, what is it, what's it gonna take for us not to give up? What's well, the message? I want people to understand that there is enormous power in that individual. That's what Governor Hunt was all about. He was ambitious for the right things throughout all his life, cared deeply, made things happen, worked hard at it. The great human stories in the world are stories, frankly, of individual leadership. These are the people we remember throughout history. There's enormous power in this room. I worry that people sort of roll over and that's the way it has to be. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, Social Security Act in 1935, Roosevelt was called a communist. Lyndon Johnson was called, you know, the proponent of socialized medicine, Medicare. It was only uh, 91 years ago that, uh, that, pe that women got the right to vote. And they would, this, what do these people want? I'm old enough deeply to remember the modern civil rights and the modern feminist movement. I went to high school when the sheriff of my county, Manatee County in Bradenton, Florida, led the Ku Klux Klan through the streets of East Bradenton. I was at the University of Florida when it was desegregated into its lower divisions, undergraduate divisions. But people pushed and shoved because, frankly, goodwill is not enough to change human history. You all have to insist on certain things. You have to say, I've got power within me. Uh, and you try to do it nicely, but if it doesn't work, you do a little elbowing. Uh, but you've got a lot of power, and for God's sakes, never forget it. The values that sustain you are the values your parents and your faith gave you, and they will stand you in 
stunning stead all the years of your life, and it'll be time to rest, my friends, when you're in the next world. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Randy. I'm going to stand up for David. That's great. That was wonderful. Thank you, Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. You got to well, come back. Do you need email? Yeah, you can get to him that way. Yeah. Good. Good. Oh. Good. 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 Yeah, uh, the governor just turned to me and said, "I can't beat that. Let's be finished." <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true. But I do have a, I have a little gift here for for Governor Hunt um, that I uh, I, do, I do want you to know that people here at the conference have been writing you thank you notes. Oh, well, and so we have some thank you notes for Governor Hunt uh, and for helping us uh, get, keep, the, keep the movement going. But I do want to thank you, thank David. You. you know, it is interesting. David's the second uh, keynote speaker that uh, some of you remember that talked about good, how important goodwill is. But, but at the end of both of their statements, and it was Rich Neiman from a Heckman's uh, organization, said, well, you know, at the end, sometimes you need to use your elbow. So we're on it. Right. All right, everybody. Um, Olson, you have uh, the final word, I believe. Olson? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a great trip home. You've got to come up here and help us. I will be there. Will you? Well, I'm not exactly sure that I need to say anything else. <laughs> what a marvelous time we've had. What a marvelous conference it's been. What a marvelous fellowship we've shared. What incredible learning we have been able to be engaged in. But there is no better way to sum up what we've been about than what we have just heard. So, in the words of our Presbyterian ministers, go out into the world Give evil to no man, respond only in justice and in love, and do the right thing. Thank you for being here.